We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Chris is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And Zand is out in the park to answer your burning questions. That's amazing! Next patient, please. Hello, Dr Chris. First in is 12-year-old Arthur, who wants his scalp seen. So, Arthur, what has brought you to the Ouchmobile today? I have some dry, flaky patches of skin on my scalp and over my body. What's the diagnosis, Doc? So this sounds like a classic case. If I have some dry, flaky patches of skin around my scalp and all over my body, I twist. Couldn't have put it better myself. OK, Arthur, do you want to open up the eyelid? Now, lean forward so you've got this flaky skin there and then you can see some of the flakes of skin are actually in your hair. So Arthur's got this really common condition called psoriasis. And psoriasis is where your body makes too many skin cells at particular points, which is why they start flaking off. How do psoriasis come about? So it's a little bit genetic, so you get it a bit from your mum and dad. Yes. But it's partly to do with your body having an increased amount of inflammation at those sites. So you get too many skin cells, which is where you have to brush them off and moisturise them. OK. Arthur, thank you very much for bringing in your psoriasis to see me. I'm out and about. Let's see if anyone's got any questions for me. Why is Veruca so infectious? Verrucas are designed to be infectious. That's right, Zand. Viruses want to spread and take over the world. They get on your feet and then they kill the cells in your feet and get them to spread little bits of virus all over the floor and then other people pick them up on their feet. They ride around in swimming pools, changing room floors, things like that. So if you've got a Veruca, cover your foot when you go to the swimming pool and if you haven't got a Veruca, then make sure you don't get one by keeping your feet clean. Chris is back at the Ouchmobile. Next patient, please. And next into the clinic is nine-year-old Jessica. So, Jessica, what brings you to the Ouchmobile today? Well, my joints are very fluffy and I've got pseudochondroplasia. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a classic case of my joints are really floppy and I've got pseudoachondroplasia-itis. Well, easy for you to say. <laughs> so, let's have a look. Do you want to open the eye? I'll give you a hand. So, can you show us on the ouch cam your floppy joints? <laughs> oh, wow. OK, yeah, so they're very floppy, aren't they? I can bend my hand back to my wrist. Back. Wow! <laughs> so, you said you've got this thing called pseudoachondroplasia. So, can you show us what are the other things that, that go with that? Um, I'm shorter than all my friends. In fact, if I stand next to you, <laughs> that'll be very obvious, <laughs> won't it? Because you're about half my height. And, you, and, and most nine-year-olds would be taller, wouldn't they? Yeah. OK. So, pseudoachondroplasia is a, is a medical condition that makes you short because your bones don't grow properly. And that's because there's a problem with one of the genes for this protein called collagen. Collagen's in your joints and it makes your ears, it makes all the soft, bristly bits of your body. What makes my joints? like bend back really far. I think it's because the way the collagen is produced actually kills some of the bone cells while they would normally be growing. So all of that makes your joints more flexible. Is there anything cool about having studio A come to place here? Well, when I was younger, me and my friends liked to play hide and seek so I could always hide in smaller places. So you can win any game of hide and seek because you can get into the smallest place. Yeah. OK, so Jessica, thank you very much for coming in with your pseudo-achondroplasia. Thank you very much, Dr Chris. That is a real pleasure. Job done for today. Clinic closed. <laughs> today we're back at a theme park with our mobile clinic. Zand is preparing the Ouchmobile ready for his first patient. And Chris is out and about in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is nine-year-old Kayla, who wants to talk about her tummy. Why have you come to the Ouchmobile today? Um, I have this interesting white line going down my stomach. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got an interesting white line going down my stomach-itis. I can't wait to see it. Now, can we have a look? OK. Oh, there it is. What's interesting about this is that the line it runs along is called the line of Blasco. 
The lines of Blasco are the little lines in your skin that cells march along when you're growing inside your mum. And the cells that make your skin a dark colour are called melanocytes, they make melanin. And you've got a few less of them walking along that line. I think that it's quite a special line and you should be quite pleased about it. Thank you very much for bringing your amazing line into the Ouchmobile. You're welcome. Away from the clinic, Chris is out and about in the park solving your medical mysteries. Why do you go red when you're shy? Being shy is a bit like being attacked. And your heart rate increases and your face goes red because there's more blood going to it. Thank you, Dr. Chris. Why do paper cuts hurt so much? I think the reason they hurt so much is because paper just cuts that top bit of the skin where all the nerves are. So it's, it's as painful as if you cut it with a knife. Does that explain it? Yeah. Back at the Ultramobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's 11-year-old Martha with a multicoloured mystery. So, Martha, why have you come to the Ultramobile? I've got a bluey, greedy eye with a smudge of brownie in it. What's the diagnosis, Dog? Okay. Sounds to me like a case of I've got a bluey, greeny eye with a smudge of brown in it. Itis. Yep, that's what she said. Can you open up the eyelid on the ouch cam? OK. Now, that eye is just a regular blue eye. But this one has got two different colours in. So we call this mosaicism, like after a mosaic. Yeah. So effectively, your eyes are made of different colour tiles, and you've got mostly blue tiles with a few brown tiles. How did I get it? So everyone starts life as just one single cell, and that divides in half to become two cells, then four cells, eight cells, until you get Martha. And somewhere early on, one of the cells makes a decision to go, you know what, I'm going to be brown eyes, not blue eyes. Yeah. And those cells have stuck together, and they're in your eye. Thanks very much for bringing your amazing eye to the Ouchmobile. Thank you, Dr Zand. Job done for today. Clinic closed. <laughs> Today we're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Chris is preparing the Ouchmobile for his first patient. And Sand is out in the park to answer your burning questions. That's amazing! At the clinic, Chris is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is nine-year-old Alfie with his multicoloured mop. So, Alfie, what brings you to the Ouchmobile today? So, I have a birthmark in the back of my head, which is light brown, when all the rest of my hair is dark brown. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Right, this sounds like a classic case of I have a birthmark on the back of my head, which makes some of my hair light brown, while the rest of it is dark brown itis. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Should we have a closer look? Can you open the eyelid for me? So, there you are. Yeah. Now, can you turn around and show me okay. this, this blondish patch? And that just looks like you've got a little spray can of light brown paint and squirted it on the back of your head. Okay. So, the cells that make those hairs aren't making hair pigment. And it's a thing called poliosis. Okay. So, that bit of hair may keep getting lighter as you get older. Okay. Well, Alfie, thank you for bringing in your light brown patch of hair on the back of your head. Well, thank you, Dr. Chris. That's a real pleasure. Away from the clinic, Zand is out and about in the park. Why, just before we're about to vomit, does our mouth start to fill with sweat? So what's actually happening is that your mouth is kind of getting ready for you to be sick and trying to protect itself by putting a lot of saliva into your mouth at once. It's just your mouth trying to protect you because, you know, there's a bit of acid in your stomach, it doesn't taste very nice, and so you kind of get a watering mouth just before it happens. Back at the Ouchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's nine-year-old Nyella, whose eye needs examining. So, Nyella, what brings you to the Ouchmobile today? Well, uh, I've got a spot on my eyeball. <laughs> What's the diagnosis, Doc? Well, this sounds like a classic case of I've got a spot on my eyeball itis. Spot on. So we can see the spot on your eyeball. Why don't you open our eyelid? And there you are. Now, I want you to get in really close there. We can see it just there. It's very faint, isn't it? It's called scleral melanocytosis. I want to know why it's there. It's a bit like having a freckle in your eye, and it's just where the cells are making a bit more pigment, a bit more of the colour that goes in your skin. Well, will it stay there forever? Yeah, you will probably have that for the rest of your life. But 
that's okay, isn't it? I mean, I think it looks quite cool. Yeah. Thank you, Naella, for bringing in your scleral melanocytosis for me to see. Thank you. Yes. Job done for today. Clinic closed. We're at a theme park to solve your medical mysteries. Zand is preparing the Alchmobile ready for his first patient. And Chris is ouch and about in the park to answer your burning questions. Wow, I'm impressed. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Can I have the next patient, please? First in is eight-year-old Liam, whose scalp needs some studying. So, Liam, what's brought you to the Alchmobile? I have a double crown. I want to know a little bit about it. What's the diagnosis, dog? Sounds to me like a case of I've got a double crown and I want to know a little bit about it. Itis. That's right. Now tell me about these double crowns. Where are they? Here on my head. On the top of your head. Well, I want to get a closer look. Can you lift the eyelid for the ouch cam? That's great. So everyone has one crown at least. That's the bit at the back of your head where the hair kind of whirls in a circle. But in Liam's case, he's got two. And that is very unusual. What is a crown? A crown is nature's way of covering your head with hair very effectively. Your hair's also got to change direction, so hair's got to go down at the back, down at the front, down at the sides. And the only efficient way of doing that is to swirl it round in a circle. All having a double crown means is that you're a bit special and a bit unusual. Very few people have them. I've never seen one before. So thanks very much for bringing your amazing head into the Alchmobile. And thank you, Dr. Zan. Away from the clinic, Chris is ouch and about in the park. How can we be twins but be so different? So how are you guys different? She's got Down syndrome and I don't. And you don't? OK. Zand and I come from one egg, whereas you each come from a different egg in your mum. And Down syndrome happens when the egg that made Charlotte had one extra chromosome in it. So in every egg, the chromosomes, the chromosomes are the genes, and Charlotte's got one more chromosome than you. That means you look a little bit different, and I guess you feel a bit different, and you may act a little bit different, you may think a little bit differently. So what things do you like to do that you're good at? Dancing. Dancing. So like all twins, you've probably got lots of things that you like that are the same. Yeah. And so the one difference is you've got an extra chromosome. Yeah. Back at the Alchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's 10-year-old Josiah who wants Zahn to check out his cheek. So, Josiah, why have you come to the Alchmobile? Well, I have a scar running from my eye to my mouth. So what's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got a scar running from my eye to my mouth itis. Sounds right to me. Now, how did it happen? Well, I grabbed something from my brother and he jumped and scratched me in my face. Now, Josiah, can we get a closer look at this scar of yours? Yeah. Can you open the eyelid for the ouch can? I'm going to zoom in here. And that's it there. Now, have you got any questions about your scar? If I go older, would my scar get bigger? You're already 10 years old. So your head is about 95% as big as it's ever going to be. So if you look at our heads, our heads are actually quite similar size, right? They're roughly the same size. That means that the skin on your face isn't going to change size, and so that scar is going to stay roughly the same size. What did it look like when you first got it? It looked like this. Oh, wow. Scars just take a long time to heal, so that'll keep healing over time. And in a few years, I bet you won't even be able to notice it. Josiah, thanks very much for bringing in your amazing scar. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Dan. Job done for today. Clinic closed.